Hostiles, 12 o'clock and 6 miles. What is this tack they're looking for anyway? It's some kind of weapon left by the ancients. The kind that decides who wins the war. Have Moloch's warriors been here before? I don't like the look of this. That was above and beyond. Isn't the Lambda site off-world, sir? I'd like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no sensors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much. So I'm wondering if the Florida Maquis had put in a title or a description of a video in Antarctica, giant tadpole-like fish found with one enormous eye I wonder how many people would have believed, even if I could have showed them a picture of one. I would have been called a loon. It would have been called, oh, what's the new word now? They were calling it pareidolia, now they're calling it apophenia. Apparently all 100,000 plus of us are suffering from it. But nevertheless, here we are. It does exist. It's called a ratfish. But funny thing, though, if I had described it that way, and you had gone to Google, and you had searched ratfish, you wouldn't have seen anything quite like that. These fish have all, they have somewhat bigger eyes, but nothing like what that guy's holding. And that picture, of course, is right here. So that just goes to show you about dismissing things out of hand without considering them. Now, I want to show you something in Antarctica that should blow your mind. I was going to use it, but I thought, you know what? I've shown them dragons. I've shown them all this other stuff. They're not going to believe it. Let's just stick with the stuff that they can somewhat wrap their mind around. All right, so you got the picture of the thing on the left, right, in your mind? Check that out. You've got the giant eye, <laughs> you've got the mouth, you've got the fin, and you've got the weird, long, spotted body. Now, the coloration on this one is a little bit different, but it's uh, very, very apparent that that's what that is. Let me zoom out get a better angle again. And let me... um say something to some of you have, that have said, you know, I just don't see it. Honestly, 
I'm going back through a lot of stuff that I found using my little 15-inch laptop and finding stuff all around it now because I have a much I have a 27 inch desktop computer and it really does have a lot to do with your graphics card the amount of memory you have Google Earth Pro for those of you that are trying to find it in the in the Play Store it's not a phone app it's a standalone program you have to have on a laptop or some type of a desktop computer um so, and even here in this picture, it looks like there might be some kind of a squid in the background, but there's also a very small, tiny creature right here. Well, I guarantee I would have never, never seen this in this resolution with, with my laptop. It would just wouldn't be. So I think there might be some issue with that here, that I'm revealing things that, because I've had people come to me and say that they're looking at this using their 65-inch 4K TV, and they're seeing way more stuff than even I'm seeing. So, there's that. You know, I'm not intentionally trying to deceive anyone. But the next thing I'm going to show you is one of the hardest things that might be, this might be the limit. You might need to have at least what I'm using or above to um, see what I'm going to show you guys. It is looks very much like some type of a sculpture of a man fighting against a dragon. Now, I know that's crazy, right? You're just going to have to stick with me on this. I've brought up some images. Oh, son of a gun, this thing's going to pull this again. So don't think that if you ever have a problem with Google Earth Pro, that it's just you. Once in a while, this thing will go a little haywire on me, and you just got to get the angle right. To zoom in and sometimes I have to shut it down and start all over now right here this is very very difficult to see I'm at high altitude about 929 feet the resolution on this is very very tough to show but I'm gonna to try to describe this there's a man on the right and there's a beast on the left this is the man's front left leg this is his head. He's facing the beast. There's a cape right here. This is this man's left front elbow. Here is his head. And in the back, I'm going to try to zoom in just, gosh dang it, I knew if I zoomed a little closer, I would get too far in. One second. All right. Over the man's right shoulder, right here, is a weapon they call a pole arm or a pole axe. And I want to try to show that. It's one of these. It took me forever to find this exact picture. It has a, a pike on the front and an axe on the back. And as we zoom in here, and like I said, gah, so tough to do. All right, looks like we're going to be stuck at about 900 feet. So you have an idea of what a poleaxe looks like. It's right here over his right shoulder. It looks like this sculpture, whatever this was, is buried in the snow, in the ice. Might have been part of some type of a, a temple, a building, uh, something like a Parthenon down there that just didn't survive. Now, directly above it, and let me see if I can turn off that. There looks like to be a giant key. Here's the head, here's the body, here's the, the key part. And almost another sculpture of, do you recognize the face? the furrowed brow, the eyes. We'd showed in another place one of the best images of a simian I have ever seen in my life. That's basically a monkey. And here we have another image where we have the nose, we have the mouth, we have the furrowed brow, almost a baboon-like shape, baboon face, right here. 
and very close up here there's a, a head of something sticking out like right here but that's not nearly as uh, detailed the simian face is very close around here let me see if I can find it here it is now you've got to flip this around to see it we've shown this before I know pareidolia guys but very few people claiming pareidolia can describe at least seven features on the face like you know with the the face on Mars the, the face over here in Antarctica you can describe maybe three or four features I can describe a nose and nostrils I can describe a mouth a very distinct chin an eye the shadowing for under the eye the eyebrow furrow the head I can describe an ear and all of this stuff is exactly in the right proportions of a monkey of a simian there's no way this is not art of some kind I mean that that's face I'm just you know I don't know how anybody could look at that and go yo you're just wanting to see the face now given that we know that there are giant tadpole like creatures with huge eyes for real I'm gonna show you guys some other things that are a little bit more um, kind of tough to see but I think they're there now this is a tough thing this is actually what you're looking at is the seafloor and when you zoom in close here you can see what looks like an upper jaw here and a lower jaw here it's it's kind of a beak shape from just behind this rock There's another one. See if I can get this turned around right. Here's the eye, upper jaw, lower jaw. I think it's got its head turned to its right, and the rest of its body is back here. And this is a region that I had um, looked at before and just couldn't see these things. Now, a lot of deep sea animals, that one, for example, um, on Fox, was caught in 2,600 feet of water. I don't know many guys that line fish that deep. Maybe I'm wrong. I mean, I'm sure there's somebody out there that can tell me if I am. But 2,600 feet seems like incredibly deep water to be line fishing. This looks very, very much like a squid that's got some level of translucence going on right here. Here's, of course, the head. Here's the tentacles at the bottom. There's almost what looks like perhaps a fish here. you got to remember the technology using to, that's being used to take this picture. You know, it's from a great distance above. And there's something here, I can't uh, totally make it out, but very strange. All right, let's see here. And as you can see, this uh, don't feel like it's just you if this uh, this happens sometimes. It zooms faster than the uh, imagery can catch up with it. Sometimes just spinning your angle around like this can fix that. Oh, here we go. Now, I think we're looking at, not to be overly redundant here, but we have... An upper jaw, you can see the teeth. Lower jaw, eye, some kind of uh, 
rear skull ear formation right there. And right next to it, this is an easy one. Once again, all of these things hidden in the shadows seem to all have eyes. Very large, very pronounced eyes. Which you would expect for underwater marine creatures. Just like we saw in the picture. What this is, no clue. And let's see. We're at 13 minutes. I guess it'll be the last one here. Sorry, this thing is just being a pain in the butt today. All right, now this one... There, I stopped it. You can... The reason I brought this one up is you can very clearly see the head of the serpent on this one. A lot of the serpent stuff that I've shown... It just looks like kind of a string with kind of one end that's a little larger. This one, you can see the black eye, the lower jaw, the mouth that's open. Can you see it now? And you can see the very distinct coloration. Back through here. A lot of this is obscured, but... I live in Florida. We have a lot of snakes. I've seen a lot of snakes' heads, and this is the head of a snake. And it looks to be swallowing something. So I guess I'll just leave that there and let you guys look over these. I'll, of course, give you all the locations, and you can make your own judgment call. Like, share, subscribe. would like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable, First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no sensors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. Would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you and thank you so much. Hot time, 12 o'clock and six miles. What is this tack they're looking for anyway? It's some kind of weapon left by the ancients. The kind that decides who wins the war. Have Moloch's warriors been here before? I don't like the look of this. That was above and beyond.